today's tutorial, I'm going to show you something that I call the Gilded Age. It's just a fun way to collage some 3D elements like paper flowers and kit components that you might have lying around. And we're going to use a little bit of gesso for that and a few other simple tools like acrylic paint and ink. And you will be absolutely amazed at how pretty this is. Now I'm terrible about collecting little kits and die cuts that I never use, so I was so excited when I found this technique, which is inspired by Donna Downey. So what you do to begin with is glue your flowers. I use Stampin' Up! paper flowers and some Stampin' Up! kit items. And I glue them down with mono multi-adhesive to a piece of heavy-duty watercolor paper. And as you can see, I just glued the centers. I didn't like really stick down all the petals, and you don't need to. The gesso holds things in place, but also the fact that some of the petals pop up off of the watercolor paper adds a lot of texture and fun, so don't sweat that. And I'm using Bob Ross Gesso. This is a liquid gesso. Gesso comes in various thicknesses, so choose what you like. I like this because I can layer it, and I'm just pouring it directly onto my project and then moving it around with a flat paintbrush. I like the flat brush because it lets me move across the surface evenly, but any paintbrush you have will work, even a foam brush. Now, I'm notoriously impatient. Uh, normally, I paint gesso on top of gesso while the initial layer is still wet, which is completely fine. But every now and then, I like to give myself a head start by using my heat gun to speed things up in between applications. And as you can see, even though I'm using heavy-duty watercolor paper, because I'm using all these wet mediums on this project, it's still curling just a little bit, which is fine. It'll straighten out as it dries. But this is the reason that you don't want to use cardstock for this technique. It definitely will not hold up to everything that I'm going to be putting on it throughout this project. Now what I'm trying to do with the gesso is if I had just used all white flowers, I could have used just a few layers and it would have been fine. But since I do have the pink and blue flowers that I have from just an adorable kit, I do want to cover up that color so that I have the same tonal value for my background before I start embellishing it. That's why I'm being so generous with the gesso layers. I'd like it all to look sort of the same before I move on to the next steps. Now in a real exercise of true laziness, I'm going to use the heat gun and the paintbrush at the same time. So never underestimate the power of laziness in creating beautiful art projects. It's always worked for me. I also like the Bob Ross gesso because it comes in this nice squirt bottle. I don't have to dip into a container, which tends to contaminate whatever I'm dipping into because I'm also not very good about cleaning my brushes. I used to be. I'm a Virgo. You think I would care more, but now I've discovered that it's more fun to create than to clean. And that's really super liberating, actually. I recommend it. So just hit it a few more times until you get it the way you like it. And then I'm going to take a small amount of, I'm using Liquitex white acrylic paint. You can use any white acrylic paint. Doesn't matter. You really just need a tiny amount. This is an A2 sized card. Um, so it doesn't need to be much. And I'm using a Coastal Cabana reinker from Stampin' Up! to custom dye my paint for this project. You can see it has a little rhinestone on the bottle. So that's how I roll. 
Actually, it was a complete accident. And just keep adding reinker until you get the acrylic paint the tone that you like. I'm just using a paper plate as a palette. Mostly because I can't find my other palettes. Now paint the acrylic, custom dyed acrylic paint all over the top of your card base. You'll want to eventually cover up everywhere that you can see white on this card base. Or not. Actually, it doesn't matter. I don't even know why I said that make it look like whatever you want it to look like. But I'm going to make mine sort of a uniform teal color. And I'm also just going to add pure reinker in some spots without the paint because I like having the flowers just be a slightly darker tone than the rest of the project. So feel free to experiment with whatever medium you're using. These reinkers are water-based, which I find blends beautifully with acrylic mediums. But again, play with whatever you have. I'm a huge fan of experimentation. You don't have to run to the store every time you want to make something, even though that's what most of us do. So I'll just keep going over these flowers, and I realize that some of the detail seems like it's getting lost here because it's a very monochromatic background even though I do have this beautiful texture from the flowers but by the end of the project you're gonna see that all of that detail is maintained and highlighted at the end so don't worry if it has a kind of sameness when you're in this phase of the project because you really haven't lost anything it's another reason though that I like the thinner gesso because it does maintain some of those textural details on delicate items like the paper flowers. If you had sort of a sturdier collage element, I think you could use a thicker medium than the liquid gesso that I'm using. But for my purposes, it really works perfectly. So once you've dried your acrylic paint layer, you might want to go back and add some shadows under the flowers, which I'm doing with a black pan pastel and a pan pastel applicator. As you're watching this, you probably think I'm completely insane because that black is a pretty stark contrast against the rest of the project. But I intend to paint over this and so what I'm doing is giving myself a very dark tonal contrast to the turquoise color on my card that I'll mute out with more paint but that darkness will show through those paint layers and give me just a very subtle shadow underneath these flowers and give me just a little bit more realism if I left it all the same value even with the detail that I'm going to add at the end, I'm not sure that it would have as much impact as it will if I lift them off the page just a little bit with these shadows. I love the Pan Pastel because it's so soft and mixes so well with other mediums that I can feel really comfortable about adding it to projects that use acrylic paint or gesso or ink. It seems to work with everything. Next up is this Inca Gold Metallic Rub. This is the ooh and ah of this project. I'm just rubbing it onto the flowers with my fingers. This seems to give me the most control over this product. I have used it with sponges and other applicators, but I really like finger painting with it the best. I feel like I can control how much goes on to my project and also how light or firmly you press on your project makes a huge difference with the accents that you get with this product. It's absolutely beautiful. So once I rub these flowers you can really see that that detail of the petals just 
pops out. I mean, it didn't even look like it was there before. And now it has this gorgeous sculptural look that's highlighted with the gold that I can really, now I can sort of build my composition with. So I'm going to come back with the paint and blend my shadows around each of these flowers just a little bit. I'm just using the paint that was left over from the last step. And you can see that the paint will mute it out, but it'll still leave me with a little bit of darkness underneath each flower. which is exactly what I was going for. Just some variation in that background. And then you can go back and add even a little bit more pan pastel at this point if you want to highlight a few of the other flowers. This is so forgiving and so fun. Then blend it in with your paintbrush. I do recommend keeping a cup of water nearby if you're going to be if there's going to be time between the layers like there has been in this project just to preserve your brushes just keep them clean while you're working so I'm going to sort of dry in between applications of the paint and then come back in and lighten up those shadows as I need to while my heat guns running it's amazing how it really starts to come together into kind of a painting towards the end. And don't worry about losing details at this stage that you might have picked up with the gold because we're going to come back with some more Inca gold at the end after I feel like I have my shadows more looking more organic, which is what I want. So grab a little more Inca gold and just remember this is a very soft medium a little bit of it goes a really long way if you're looking for just definition like I am on top of the texture so just pat real lightly and pick it up and then go over it if you need it it becomes very vibrant and beautiful when you apply it in a really thick layer but what I'm looking for here is I just want to highlight these gorgeous little veins in these flower petals. And so a light touch is all I need. But look at how they start to pop out of that background with just a tiny bit of this gold. It's so beautiful. And since these are complementary colors, they work really, really nicely together. It comes in other colors as well. I love the copper, um, but I think with this turquoise, the gold is just stellar. And that slight blackness in the background from the shadow just makes them so incredibly spectacular and interesting. Really different from what they started from. So... Who knew that a product like that could look this elegant and antiqued? So thank you very much for watching. I hope you try it yourself.